parcellation is the norm here. And we have adapted to this. Finding vineyards of more than one hectare is difficult. It is complicated. The large parcels with new plantings are only found in terrains that are less adequate for the vine. Those can be larger than an hectare. Traditional viticulture has been based on making the best use of the terrain that can only be found in small parcels. With respect to location, I assume that there should be very important differences. For example, this beautiful vineyard that you have here in this hill must be different from those in the lower areas of the valley. How is that? There are several reasons. First, on a slope vineyard, the rainwater flows down the hill and it carries nutrients with it. The terrain loses nutrients and becomes less productive. This confers the vines with higher quality. The soils are mainly composed of a substrate of granite. Some plots have a little higher concentration of sand, but the base is granite. This makes these soils very porous. These were mountains of granite that have decomposed with time. This is what we see here, the brown soil. Yes, dark brown, almost black in some areas. Depending on the organic matter content, it will be less or darker. You were telling me before that granite soils confer a particular characteristic to the fruit, whether they are tomatoes or grapes. A point of acidity. Lots of acidity. Not a very high acidity, but just the characteristic point of acidity that makes us differentiate from other areas. Which is what characterizes Albariño wines, right? Yes, to Albariño in general and to all wines of Galicia. In this area, what governs our viticulture during the summer is humidity. We are next to the Atlantic and there is a constant supply of humidity. This is our way of making ecologic viticulture. We raise the grapes and we get natural ventilation. We bring them far from the ground where the humidity level is always higher. The grape branches hang from the top and the leaves provide shelter from the sunlight. And the wind channeled by the para cleans and dries the grapes. What do you do with these leaves that get in the middle? We try to get rid of them one by one. For how long do you have to do this? We do this during a month. We call this defoliation. This helps obtain a proper ventilation of the grape bunches. Also, when it comes to the time of harvest, which is manual, we don't have to look for the bunches as they are clearly seen. We don't have to waste time looking for them among the leaves. And finally, the disease treatments are more efficient. What are the most common diseases that you have to face? The worst is the mildew. There are other diseases, but mildew is the main one. Sometimes closer to the harvest, we can have episodes with botrytis, which is the gray or bunch rot. But that is easier to control. Depending on the pattern of the vineyard, it gives small or very small berries, very delicate and with intense aromas. Also very versatile, right? as it allows you to make it in different styles. You have different styles, right? Well, we elaborate a classic albariño. We don't use wood or anything like that, but we do use some methods that I will show you later. Please, we are in the elaboration room. You harvest the grapes manually. Yes, we start with this, that we hang it to the wire in the parral and we place the grapes inside. Then we transport them in these boxes. They are mandatory plastic boxes for the transportation of the grapes. Nothing else can be used. The boxes must be plastic and perforated. This makes the grapes to arrive to the winery without damage. No damage of any kind. The grapes arrive very healthy. When they arrive here, what we do as quickly as possible is to press them. Before that, we destem them. 
Then we cool the must down as quickly as possible as well. For how long do you cool it down? The first thing is to get rid of the gross leaves. We clarify the must. And we transfer it directly to the vessels for the alcoholic fermentation. The fermentation is done at a constant temperature that depending on the year can last 10, 15 or 20 days. But one characteristic thing that we do to all our wines is a criantha on its leaves, a natural criantha by gravity. The sediments of the wine precipitate and are collected at the bottom and then we put them on top of the vessel again. We do this continuously during two, three or four months to make the wine to gain complexity, to gain structure in the mouth. <laughs>